All right, hello everybody. This is going to be the day's first and last talk in English you'll hear. <laughs> so, I'm Otto. I came all the way from Finland here to tell you about how to, what you should know about the database. So, I'm a long time Linux and open source advocate, and I'm a, I've contributed to WordPress core, but also to many other projects. And I've contributed quite a lot to MariaDB, so I know a few things about the database. And I, I work at a company called Seravo, which makes enterprise-grade hosting and upkeep, which means upkeep means that we guarantee our customers that the site works all the time, no matter how much traffic they have, or even if their own coders sometimes make mistakes, we ensure that the site works all the time. All right, so why, why do I like to tell about the database? Because I think it's the, the common, common problems you have with WordPress is either that it gets slow or you might have security issues, somebody hacks your web, website. And the database is related to both of them. So I think it's important for developers to know something about the database. There's all of your valuable data and it's often the bottleneck of performance, how fast your WordPress page displays. So in my opinion, the database is the single most important part of your WordPress infrastructure. So I have 10, 10 tips for you. And tip number one is that learn how to make database dumps. How many of you know how to make a database dump? So that's very convenient because it's, it, you get a plain text version of your database and you can read exactly what it contains and you can even edit it and then import it again into your database. So, and also it's important to know how to make database dumps in plain text because that's the only interoperable way you can move your database from one system to another and from one database version to another. And you can do that using the traditional MySQL dump tool or using VP CLI. So here is an example. This is the command I use to make database dumps. And by the way, there is my Twitter handle. So my slides have quite a lot of code examples. So you might want to look at them afterwards and I will post my slides in my Twitter account so you will find them there. So here is an example how it looks like and you can for example make two database dumps before and after you change a setting and then you can use diff for the text files to find out what changed in the database. That's fairly convenient. And more, more about the structure of the database. Here you can see some, some column, some table names and, and values. But more, more you can find in the WordPress codex on that page. Right, so tip number two, learn how to use VP CLI. It's very convenient for database operations. You can quickly find out what are your biggest tables and you can search any string from your database and my favorite one is the last one, the VPCLI command search and replace. How many of you have used it? Quite a few. So this is an example how you can in your entire database change a HTTP address into the secure version very easily and quickly. And then tip number three, how many of you use PHP MyAdmin? Almost everybody. So my tip is that check out Adminer. It's a smaller and faster and in my opinion better graphical tool to browse your database. Then tip number four. This is something that all WordPress developers should know. So on every single WordPress page load, this query is made from the database. WordPress always gets the options on every single page load. So you, if you have a slow site, you can check manually running this command, SQL command, in your database console to see how many rows it returns 
and how long it takes. So if you have, if the result is very big or slow, then that's going to slow down every single page load of WordPress. And here is a few, is two examples. If you notice that your VP options table is very big, you can use these SQL commands to find out what are the, what are the biggest fields and what rows are most common. And WordPress doesn't have an index in this table at all because it's supposed to be by design less than one megabyte all the time. But if your database is bigger than that, then you need to either clean it up or add an index. Another table that often unfortunately grows big is the VP post meta table. Especially if you have WooCommerce installed, it will generate lots and lots of rows into this table. And with this command, you can find out what type of rows are most common in your VP post meta table. Unfortunately, lot of, lots of plugins pollute this table. And we need to raise some awareness among the plugin developers and team developers that you can't use the post meta functions too much because every single time you save something, it will generate one new row in the database. So then tip number six, learn SQL. So the commands I show you are here are in the SQL language and that's something you can command to the database and it will fetch the data for you. So if you learn the basics about selects and inserts and updates, then you will be a better WordPress developer because you have some un understanding of how the WordPress is talking to the database. And if, you're, if you notice that you're doing something that you are using very, very frequently or in high numbers, the WordPress meta functions, then you should consider creating your own table. That's not too hard and it will be very good for performance. And then when you learn SQL, you should learn what an index and a full table scan means. These are links to the documentation, so if you find my presentation, you can read more. And then tip number seven, I just told you to learn some SQL, but next I tell you don't use it directly. You need to understand how it works, but you're not supposed to use it most of the time directly. So WordPress has lots of built-in func functions to do it. The most simple one is get posts. If you're just getting posts, use the built-in WordPress function. It will do all the caching and optimizations for you. If that's not good enough, you need to do something more complex. Use the VP query class. And if that's not good enough, then you can use the VPDB get row and insert and other methods. And if, that, if not even that is good enough for you and you need to do your own SQL commands, then don't put them directly, but use the VPDB prepare and VPDB query methods. It, it, it will protect you from SQL injections. <coughs> All right, so that was the part for for WordPress, but then you need to make sure that your database installation is also good. So I would recommend MariaDB, well obviously because I've been involved in its development, but also many of you who like open source probably understand that something that's managed by Oracle is not going to be a good open source product in the long run. And then you need to use a recent version, and then you need to make sure that all of your settings are okay, that you have, you're using the InnoDB engine, that your character set is correct, and your collation is correct, and so on. And this is actually quite complex. So if you are working on a very big project, then you maybe need to hire a database expert to make sure that your data stuff is correct, or, or you can use a company and a managed WordPress service that has taken care of all of these settings for you. And then sometimes you shouldn't use the database at all. And here is a quick example of how to use transients. Transients enables you to store complex queries. The result of complex queries 
in a single database row or if you have Redis or something similar installed, it will be stored in memory and will be super fast. How many of you have heard about the transient API in WordPress? Please check it out. It will help you make your site, make your own code much faster in many occasions. All right. And then my last tip is that you should do something to monitor your performance. You can use the show process list in the console, try it out, or you can enable, MariaDB has something called slow log, so that you can log, for example, all queries that take more than five seconds, and then analyze what's in the log. And there's also tools like, for example, Tideways, that you can use to analyze what's happening in your PHP code and database in real time in production. And then my <coughs> one final and extra tip is that never push your database into production. And this is something that unfortunately happens quite often because people, when they develop WordPress sites, they do some, some things in code and some things in the settings and the settings are in the database and then they are tempted to push the database into production. That's, that's bad. Try to do something else. All right. Thank you. I will be around here for the lunch if you want to ask me something directly. We, we don't have time for more than one question right now. Yes. All right. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the awesome and very good speech, very good tips, by the way. Uh, I wanted to ask uh, one question regarding the collation of database, because, well, in previous developments, I've run into old servers that are running like playing UTF-8 instead of the MD4, whatever was after. And I would like to know if there is any important difference besides maybe some security concerns or something else because uh, sometimes I'm like forced to change the collation of the database to work with these old servers that they shouldn't be existing in a way but sometimes you run into them and there's no other option around so I'd, I'd like to know if there's anything else besides well you listed the motives for example but I know there's some security concern in there I think I don't think there's any security concern but uh there are some usability concerns. So when you are creating your database, make sure that you choose the UTF MB4 character set, because if you want to store emojis in your database, in your comments, for example, then you need to have this character set. And then the collation means in what order is the results. If you have a result in an alphabetical order, then in what order is the different characters uh, put <coughs> So that needs to be, in your case, the Spanish collation. All right, so the server, for example, does not allow this newer collation, let's say, because like I said, they're very old servers. They shouldn't be there in, in yeah. first place, but. So th then you can dump the database in the text format and then change the collation and then import it back yeah, again. Yeah, that's what, that's what I. That's, that's the safest right. and easiest thing to do. All right, thank you.